A very good afternoon. Welcome to another live broadcast. My name is Isa Phillips. I can't tell that well. If you've been following us by now, of course, you know who I am. I want to give thanks to God for another beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. And this is the 24th of the month of December 2020. The Lord has really been good to us. He's brought, he's brought us this far to show forth his goodness and his glory his love and his mercy so much has happened in our lives in the past uh, 12 months but we want to give thanks to God that we are alive today and well many things are happening out there a lot of people are still sick falling sick here and there the corona is still very much around but so is the gr the grace of God and the mercy of God and the ability to listen and hear what the lord is doing even in seasons like this in times like this while we are celebrating the festive uh, uh, season uh, a lot of people are already in the christmas mood but i just felt you know um that we need to look at some signification in in the word of god in terms of uh, um th this season this season plays an important role in the life of many people of course in the life of the followers of, of our Lord Jesus Christ and among those who are very religious who you know who see Christmas as a time where to you know celebrate and uh, exchange pleasantries and well wishes and all of that we we thank God that we are alive and we are part of what is shaping the new day that heaven has brought us into it wasn't my intention actually to come this uh, you know this this morning we're still in morning just uh, a few minutes to 12 but I was thinking about a few things and um, I began to kind of reminisce on the importance of this period in time, this moment in time, some centuries ago, our Lord Jesus Christ was literally born into this world. And uh, there is so much, you know, prophetic significance to, to that birth that I felt many people uh, have lost sight of, just like, you know, people were not aware in the days where Jesus was born there are things the Spirit of God is also birthing in our days releasing in our day that many are not aware of many are not even you know uh, uh, are not conscious of are not prepared for so I, I see the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ as a prophetic voice to us to us living in this day in this 21st century and in this season where all kinds of things are now being defined to be the new normal of how our life amen is going to be and how we're going to you know engage the you know the the days ahead of us and i just felt we need to you know look into 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 god's word find one or two scriptures also to kind of give us perspective direction and uh, if you will insight to where we are and where the lord is leading us right and i believe that you know the birth of our lord jesus christ is still speaking to us even today and i hope that some of the things that i'm going to be sharing with us if you are watching and for those who will be listening i want to pray that the few moments we're going to be sharing together looking into god's word i pray that this word will sink deep into your spirit that this will not just be uh, another word and this is not just a christmas you know message this is a prophetic message that will lead us that will guide us that will push us into the future in the days of the nearness of the kingdom of god what manner of men we ought to be what kind of life how are we supposed to adjust what kind of position of life are we supposed to be expressing what kind of people are we supposed to be 
what should be our perspective our sense of reasoning and commitment to the things of the spirit so this is a message to me that i believe has brought you know a great burden personally to my own heart and i hope that anyone out there who will be listening watching all right will also feel the same because these are days where the lord is looking for whosoever if you're willing and obedient the bible says you will eat of the good of the land of course there are things the spirit of god is releasing and giving to us in this glorious day that will help us to have you know understanding and align our heart accurately to the mandate to the demand of the spirit this is a kingdom focus uh, 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 exaltation if you will admonition it's it's not it's not it's not one of those you know lengthy message i don't i don't wish to take you know much of your time i just want to you know drop what the lord has has laid in my heart like i you know i, I already said to some of our followers this morning that I'm, i won't be broadcasting so i'm sure some of you will be surprised to see me broadcasting yeah and that is because i mean i was so burdened by some of the things that i was looking into i, I you know as i was thinking and you know allowing the scripture the, the word of god to speak to me and i said to myself we are actually relieving the days of the birth of our lord jesus christ of course jesus has been born amen and we're preparing for his coming but there are things or are within the context of the coming of the lord that god is still birthing that the father amen is is birthing through his spirit into our life into our space and i hope i pray that we will be fully aware we'll be fully awakened we will be fully ready and prepared that we will adjust our sight in order to see and that's why you know i title this you know this this uh, uh, conversation or uh, this signification the significance amen of the birth of of the messiah of our lord jesus christ do we understand what that is what that means when we say all right uh, 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 a savior is born today in bethlehem what does that mean and uh, I, I really want us to look into all of this and believe god that he will grant us amen the the the, the grace the wisdom now, one of the things that I quickly put down, or maybe before I go into all of that, let, let, let's just pray. Father, we we bless you. We glorify your name. We honor you, O God, for your spirit, O God, that is releasing, yes, newness into our space, into our hearts. Thank you, Father, for the burdens of the days that we live in. Yes, these are the days of the end, the days of the un, 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 unfolding of the realities of your kingdom. The kingdom, yes, is near to us more than we first believe. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that our eyes now are even more focused on you, on eternal things. I pray, oh God, this afternoon, that as we hear your heart, we hear your mind, we hear your prophetic burden, oh God, that we will, we will join force. We will buy into the things that you are saying in seasons like this, oh God, that we will not be capture oh god by by the capitalist ideology will not be captured by what men call christmas that we will understand the reason yes that you came we will understand the reason why you were born that we will align ourselves oh god not to some commerce not to some idea idealism not to some traditions oh god but to the importance to the signification oh god of why yes you came to this world but beyond that that we will participate we will become instruments vessels carriers oh god of the prophetic things that you brought oh god to earth thank you oh god that once again we declare oh god that good will to men yes we proclaim that emmanuel has come that christ is crowned king today in our lives we bless you oh god we honor you we glorify your name. May your kingdom continue to find fulfillment and expression in every area of my life. My life, oh God, that I will not just be an instrument declaring this thing. That everything that is being said, oh God, will find, oh God, inroad in my own life, oh God. That, oh God, my, my spirit, soul, and body will align to this word. This eternal word that you have given unto us. Thank you, oh God. That indeed of the increase of your government and peace, there shall be no end. 
in a day where the world is searching and looking for peace all kinds of treaties out there in a day where we are searching and looking for all kinds of men yes to lead us to the place that we call there that we will recognize that you have become our leader our guide we say when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truths ah, that in this day where men are being baptized with deception and falsehood oh god that we will divorce ourselves from those things and we will get married to the voice to the instructions to the direction yes to the ministry of the holy spirit oh god that there will be oh god this day an impute of newness of grace and life oh god into our space i pray holy spirit that the heavens be open once again that we will hear the voice that that sounds from above oh god that we will be aligned oh god to the to the part of your spirit so we thank you let every man be a liar but god be true reign in us reign in us the kingdom is manifesting yes you said to me this morning there's time to press into the kingdom so we thank you lord this morning that we do not see or celebrate some 25th we rejoice that men could rejoice can come together and now there are even all kinds of regulations that people cannot even meet because of the corona we thank you lord that this thing will not be a crown to us because corona means that which is COVID and that which is crown no that this will not be crowned you are the crown king over our life not some corona no not some spirit not some agenda no we raise a standard and we declare this day let every man be a liar let every system that has been set aside to dethrone the counsels of god ah the kingdom of god shall come near you you that you're listening to me today the kingdom of god may come may find inroad and entrance into your life that as the lord knocks yes the doors of, of your heart that you will open you will allow him into your heart into your space that you will cast down every superfluity of nothingness that the loftiness of men will be brought down because in this day this glorious day only the mountain of the house of the lord the god of jacob will stand you're building your church lord and the gates of hell shall not prevail we thank you we glorify your holy name hallelujah amen and amen well if you're joining me this this uh, afternoon well welcome in the name of the lord i want to welcome you in the name of the lord right thank you sister tina thank you for joining <laughs> appreciate it i remember saying that I, I'm, I'm not going to be broadcasting what well never say never because when the spirit of god steers your heart you cannot but to prophesy so we thank god that all right we are not rigid that we are flexible we are very flexible i'm flexible to the voice of god we want to be like abraham that when god says take your son your only son to moriah to one of the mountains that i will show you sacrifice him there that while the knife is up we are still waiting to hear amen the final voice that if you say abraham stop that we are quick to stop that is the kind of life amen thank you ladies thank you my dear sister and commissaire thank you also for joining appreciate it right i guess this is a word for us this god is tearing our hearts god is preparing us for the days ahead we're going beyond the calendar days and months we're going beyond the calendar year we're going we're entering into the the nearness of what is called the the the, the realities of the kingdom of god we live in a day where there are there are kingdoms at war and all of the things happening around us amen are all defined in two orders of kingdoms they are defined in two orders of kingdom thank you my dear brother jerome jacobs thank you it's been a while to, it's been a while that we've chatted thank you nice to have you join me this 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 morning thank you so very much uh, um compliment of the season to you and your family all right we we just want to look into god's 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 word this morning all right i've got maybe about two three scriptures that i would like to share with you i don't intend to take your time but i i, I want to believe that this is a word that will will change your life will will empower you will 
will drop something i i, I want to believe that there is there is there is a steering there is a calling that is you know th there is a separation going going on right now within the 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 church all right god is preparing his ecclesia and uh, of course next year we're going to be looking at some of the things that the spirit of god has been dropping into my heart in terms of building the church of the future building that ecclesia that will carry forth that will reflect that will you know become a conduit right whenever god wants to move in a generation in a season in a time god always look for a, a people all right just like he found a man himself he, he said when i when i search and i found none all right he himself amen, he became the salvation that brought salvation the bible says christ came to this world so God will do nothing except you find instruments. So we are about, amen, preparing, looking and searching for instruments that God can use, amen, to reach, to reach what he needs to reach, to do what he needs to do, to carry out what he needs to carry out, amen. John was sent, amen, as, as a forerunner to prepare the way of the Lord, amen. So john was sent to prepare the way of the lord christ came to prepare the way of the father and the way of the spirit and that's the principle of the kingdom but i want us to look at some things this 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 day that i i like i said i i felt will steer our heart will give us a kind of perspective maybe adjust our perspective and cause us to think further amen into the significance of the nature of the days that we live in these are the days amen of 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 the newness of the birthings of the things of god all right the birth of christ amen is prophetically significant to amen the birth of this new day we 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 in in, in the teachings we did while all right we were dealing with the issues of the corona and all of the you know you know circumstance around corona god gave us a powerful word if you remember three four you know a, a months ago we were dealing with amen uh, uh, the concept of coming out of the ark i want to remind you of those you know teachings powerful teachings that we need to go back to and look at some of the principles all right that we 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 we, we, we talked about and uh, one of the things that we saw is how God used Noah. Amen. Noah was the was the was the conduit, was the voice that God used to reestablish, to re kickstart, all right, uh, 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 um, you know, the earth again. All right. And we are in a we are in a time where the Lord is reminding us again that His principles has not changed. But something, amen, must become clear to us. And those are the things that I will, excuse me, that's one of the things that I want to talk about. Some things must be clear to us. And I want us to look at some of these things, hopefully in the next, you know, uh, uh, half an hour, I, I should be done. And that is that in the day where Jesus, all right, was born, not many people were, in fact, <laughs> not, when I say not many people were aware, nobody was aware. Now, what what stood out for me is the fact that an event was happening within the human realm within the human natural realm all right that will shift that will change the course of time that will shift and change the course of history yet some of the not even some all of the most you know so-called powerful you know uh, uh, guys the the religious elites the, the 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 gatekeepers all right the fathers of the town all right the fathers of the land amen the 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 political you know uh, 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 big shots all the guys who are in charge of the resource and all of these things that we tend to look 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 at amen and and respect and honor none of them were aware of what was happening they said a king is born today a king is born today in bethlehem and nobody was aware of it so this is not just about just the birth of jesus it's about the principle that we find within the birth of our lord jesus christ that when god is moving as we know that god is moving in our day there are things the spirit of god is birthing there are things the spirit of god is is doing right now all right that carry powerful powerful prophetic amen significance that very few people amen within the church structure are aware of and i find that you know very very you know worrisome that we have to align ourselves we have to prepare our heart we have to you know understand the times and the seasons 
we we and when we talk about times and the season please let's let's divorce our 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 thought our mind amen from you know the 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 usual you know interpretation we give to it what does it mean amen to to live in a time in a day of spiritual disruption because that's one of the things the lord you know dropped in my heart while i was thinking about this he said the birth of our lord jesus christ amen was a total disruption amen to the normalcy of the day the birth of jesus christ was a total disruption amen to the economic uh, structure of the day the birth of jesus christ amen was a total disruption amen to the political system of the day the birth amen of our lord jesus christ earlier was a total disruption to the pharisaical order of the day all of the people and system that defines amen the nation of israel and 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 culture and tradition were totally have you noticed that when jesus was born he disrupted everything that amen the 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 the, 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 the pharisee and the sadducee system amen, represent the traditions that has been there all right for almost you know four thousand years was totally disrupted just by the birth amen of a child but just not a child because when you look at that child you won't see anything except you have a prophetic insight into amen the meaning of what was born who was born could god be birthing things today that we are taking for granted could we be the next instrument that god amen wants to use to disrupt alilea this thing that you know the kings of the earth thought they they they, they 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 you know they have under control have you noticed that when god begins to do his thing god doesn't god doesn't birth you know release his counsel in his intention his, his desire amen outside of this outside of the structure of the day god always birth hallelujah his intention within the structure within the globalist movement within amen those who want to you know capture the world within hallelujah those who who believe that they have you know what it takes to disrupt you know life and and change you know times and season with among those who think amen that they are going to redefine what the economy is and what finance is and what you know society means and how life amen ought to be lived within the midst of that god bats his purpose i i love god are you getting friends are you, are you guys following me the most important elites teachers political gatekeepers the rabbis of the day in the midst of all of these things amen there was a king born in a manger so we there are things that we have to look into that must begin to shift our focus when the king was born he was not born in a palace but he was a king so the kingship of God, the concept of the comings of the kingdom of God, remember that it is the king that brought the kingdom. So when we talk about amen, the kingdom coming, we're talking about the comings of Christ. Hmm. We're talking about the comings of Christ. The kingdom, the kingdom of God cannot come near us outside, amen, outside the rulership of Christ. I feel like standing. The kingdom of God comes within the context of the coming of Christ. So when Christ was born in Bethlehem, he birthed the kingdom of God earlier through his birth. In other words, we cannot talk about amen, the comings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot talk about the coming amen, of, 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 of the kingdom of God amen, without understanding amen, that the kingdom comes through the comings of Christ. All right, before I further go into all of that, just don't mind me. Just, just watch me. Just bear with me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We are at liberty, friends. We are at liberty. I 
I might just not be able to see your comments, but I'm sure you can see me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to share something. The kingdom of God came through, Amen. That reality of of the birth, Amen, of a baby. Christ was wrapped, Amen, in that in that in that infants in that little child that cannot that that depends hallelujah on 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 you know on the mother and the father yet within that within that fragile life within that you know a uh, uh, sense of dependency you know and and sucking you know the mother's breast you know and waiting on the father to carry within within that structure hallelujah there is a kingdom being formed and being battered into the earth Man is the conduit. Man is the expression earlier of the release of the things of God into the earth. That's why man plays a major role, amen, in the in the balance of power and in the shift, amen, of spiritual things. That, that, and that's the reason why the enemy is fighting. That's why you know Satan had to position himself in the garden because he understood that if I can disrupt man, I can disrupt the intentions of God. I, I, I want you to understand what what we're looking into because if we are talking about you know Christmas and all of this we might just miss the meaning the significance of the birth what I'm what I'm emphasizing this 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 day is what is the significance of the birthing of the of the coming forth why did they have to find a man a virgin a virgin girl she was just like any other girl in town the only difference is a man she has not she has not been you know betrothed to any man she has not you know you know had issue with any any man even though she was you know she 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 she, she was she was ready to get married amen to you know to to joseph but they had to put a hole they say no joseph you don't you don't touch her because uh, this one has has found favor in the sight of god we are going to use her she was ordinary there was nothing special about mary the only thing that was special about Mary is that, amen, God found purity in her. And if you understand, that is the same thing the Lord is looking for today. He's looking for a church that is pure, a church, amen, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. And, 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 and that, that doesn't come because, all right, we, we trying to please God. That comes because we love God. It's the love of God that allows us to live a life, amen, that befits his design, his intention, because uh, by strength shall no man prevail. Nobody can wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to live a holy life. You can do it by your own power. You're going to fail. But, but the more you pursue the love of God, and I believe that was what God, that's why the Bible says, amen, blessed are you among women. The blessing is not the fact that, amen, she was chosen, but for the fact, amen, that she had a desire, she had a passion, she had a hunger for God. And this is what the Lord is looking for in our day. That the things that God wants to be that wants that the things God wants to do in our day, in our time, amen, must be done through a caliber of Mary's. Mary is a type of a church, but that's not my my focus this 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 morning. My focus is the fact that God disrupted the elites of the day. God, you know, changed the system of leadership without directly fighting the present leadership. There was a leadership that was growing amen, in Bethlehem that will not just you know overthrow, but will will, will bring to redundancy because Christ did not come to over, he didn't come to overthrow you know the Roman Empire. Have you, have you noticed that he lived within the Roman Empire? <laughs> <laughs> he lived within the Roman Empire because he understood the principle, amen, of the things of God growing. They said, would you at this time restore the kingdom? He said, no, you don't understand, guys. We are not here to dethrone. We are here to, to, to make obsolete. This thing would die a natural death as we as we grow, as we develop, amen, in the principles, in the ways that the Father has ordained for us. Don't seek a flight. Seek the process to grow. When you grow, you outgrow, you overshadow, hallelujah, what is there. 
is the principle of the kingdom. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ was a total, amen, disruption to the elites, to the powers of the day. Now, let's let's go to um, let's go to Luke, Luke chapter two. Like I said, I, I don't want to drag this, but as the Spirit of the Lord will lead us, I want to establish some points. Hopefully. That will give you, you know, some insights, narratives, and understanding to what we are dealing with. In Luke chapter 2 from verse, verse, from verse 1, the Bible says, In those days of Caesar Augustus, in those days Caesar Augustus issues a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Aquarius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to, to Judea to Bethlehem. I want you to know that to Bethlehem, to the town of David. Remember that all right, Jesus, amen, was born from the tribe of David. Now listen to this. Ever since all right, the, the dynasty of David, the children of Israel had not had you know any kind of significant you know a, a, a leader that they actually were called a king from the time where or a, david's dynasty somehow ended you know all of the ones that came you know they, they all messed up and this is the reason why god said amen in amos in amos you know uh, uh, 9 11 that all right he will do what he will restore Oh, the fallen tent of David. So even the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, was the was one of the fulfillment, amen, of, of that scripture in Amos. That the, that the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ was, amen, a powerful prophetic, amen, you know, you know, a, a pointer, amen, to the restoration, amen, of the Davidic life. Because it is through the lineage of David. And the reason why, amen, God, God, God chose David, it was not, not because David was such a kind of a special person, but it was, was for the condition, the state earlier of, 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 of David's heart, David's life. The Bible says, I found a man whose heart is after me. So we begin to see something that if we are talking about, amen, David, a type of a king, and we're talking about, you know, a priesthood that God is going to be releasing in this last day, that is, that is, a, that is a king priest priesthood, which of course we have defined to be amen, a priesthood of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. The Melchizedek order, just like David, amen, is a king king you know you know is a kingship a, a priesthood amen is a priesthood that carries amen governmental authority but beyond that it, it also has the ability amen to walk in the prophetic walk in the anointing amen to bring forth to to to, to bring into bear earlier the intentions of god why because we are in the day where god is restoring the fallen tent of david so i i just quickly drop that in to kind of give us you know context to this so joseph also went up amen to the town of nazareth galilee of judea amen to bethlehem the town of david because he belonged to the house and the lineage of david are you seeing something that we've got to trace effectively? All right, we're looking at something here. Follow me. The Bible says, because he belonged to the house and, and, and the line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him. Pledged, they're not married yet, but who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. That is strange. While 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 they were there. The time came for the baby to be born. Have you noticed? While they were there, where, 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 where were they? They were in Bethlehem, amen, in Judea. Come on. The Bible says, while they were there, the time came to be born, for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to amen, a firstborn, a son. Who was the firstborn? Of course, Jesus. Now, the Bible says, she wrapped him 
in a cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them of course it was a time where everybody you know had gone back to their various towns so the entire you know family place occupy you know the all the inns all the hotel if you will the bmb everything is occupied so there was no place basically amen for you know for this baby amen to to be born the bible said that she was you know she she, she had to give birth to this baby in in the manger in the manger and we understand what that means because there was no guest room available so it's not it's not the issue of no there was no money to pay it's just the fact that there was no room there's no place hallelujah you know uh, 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 for, available for them then verse 8 says verse 6 is in fact before i read this verse 8 you know verse 8 i hope we understand the first pattern when you read scripture you've got to read scripture amen based on the prophetic intentions of god in other words from from verse 1 to verse 7 there are things that the lord will have us see scriptures are not just are not just theological scriptures are also historic you know footprint that speaks to us regarding amen god's prophetic intention every Every word, every line, Alia, carries amen, a signification. They were not just, you know, uh, uh, somewhere else. They went back to Bethlehem, Alia. In Bethlehem, there was no room for them, amen, because the entire, you know, uh, 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 house and you know places of you know of lodge were all occupied so they had to go look for a manger so d d like I, like i'm saying what we are looking at all right is the prophetic signification what, what do i mean by that i mean what is god saying to us regarding this story regarding this you know a, a, a account what do what can we glean what principle can we can we find in terms of you know god god wants to do something in in our life and the time has come for that thing all right to be birthed but every door seemed to be closed earlier every every place you turn to every person you call you you you, you try to connect with and they tell you sorry we cannot assist you but there's a manger there are you humble enough to see the hand of god earlier to bring forth his counsel even from that dimension of a manger because nobody gives birth in a manger that's a place is a manger is a stable that's a place where you know donkeys and 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 horses and 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 goats you know give births but this is where our king was born because that speak to us amen about how we define you know our sense of purpose and 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 the sense of you know narrative of you know you know how we connect what, what we call kingdom that kingdom does not necessarily mean all right that which on the outside looks so you know you know uh, 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 you know attractive and beautiful you understand it's not about what everybody wants to associate with come on If you're going to carry the things of God and you're going to, you know, begin to seek to birth those things, you have to be ready. You have to, you have to divorce yourself from the narrative of how, you know, you know, the things of God has been defined to us that, well, if we don't have this, if we don't have a five-star church, if we don't have that place, if we're not in that location, if we're not positioned there, that we cannot but that we cannot bring forth that we cannot release the intentions of God that is a lie God is not a respecter of man as is not a respecter of a place God is not a res respecter of a region the most important thing that we've got to understand is that when God has given us a vision when God has impregnate us with a seed hallelujah we have to walk in the spirit of humility not humiliation humility and sometimes we'll be humiliated for carrying the things of God for standing for amen the things of God sometimes you have to go through contradictions you will have to go through resistance you know they will have to shut shut certain doors and then you'll be asking yourself can i can i actually birth the things of god in this place can anything good come out of nazareth they said i'm just basically looking at what are the significations what are the importance 
that we can glean every year all right we learn from this story you know of you know of of, of christ the birth of christ religious people have turned into all kinds of things I'm sure your life you've heard all kinds of story about the birth of Christ. But what is the Lord saying to us prophetically that is relevant earlier to the 21st century church? Because one of the things that we have to begin to shift away from, amen, is how church is how church has been defined. That church, when we when we say church, then it must carry certain, you know, certain reflection. It must carry certain persona. You know, it, it, it has to be a three-piece suit. A church has to be a Rolex, you know, watch. A church church has to be you know uh, uh, the jeep you understand and the and the god knows what the church has to be all of these things that looks around us not like we don't believe in those things but those things do not define what we carry and what god wants to birth through our life and that is the story we pick amen from verse one of luke chapter two because if if we are focused on the wrong thing if we're focused amen on the on the glittering if we're focused on the shining things if we're focused amen on you know on on you know on the on the persona and the you know the the personality if we're focused on just you know what we define you know when we say kingdom that there, there's a way we relate to the kingdom there's a way we we believe we must relate to the kingdom when we say kingdom there's a way we believe people must see us when we say the things of god there's a way we believe that or uh, we have to connect to those things that are completely amen you know uh, 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 outside the values the values of God are not measured, amen, by the values of material worth, by the values, amen, of, you know, perishable things, of things that comes, you know, and, and, and gold, things that look beautiful today and tomorrow they are no more. The things of God, how we see things, how we understand things, how we relate and connect to the things of God has to shift away, amen, from the temporary. There are things that money can buy. Money can change a man's situations and location, but money cannot change the condition of the hearts of men. In fact, it was it will worsen it. So, so what I'm sharing is first of all learning hallelujah from from Mary and 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 and, and, and you know and Joseph. They were I was sharing with one of our sisters, you know, not too long ago that Mary and Joseph, amen, were the first pastor of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the way the Pastor Jesus, amen, is very, very important because we can learn from that. We can, we can learn from that. They, they were the one that prepared him earlier for the work of, of, his, of, his, of his Messiah, of, of, his, of his redemption. Hallelujah. And this is very important to us. Now quickly, let's jump to the next storyline, which of course also carry an important signification. Verse 8 of Luke chapter 2 says, and there were shepherds living out in the in the field nearby you know there are two narratives to this this is the first na you know na narration bible says and there were shepherds living living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flock at night an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them I, I, I needed to see, amen, what the Spirit of the Lord is describing for us. The description speaks to us about a prophetic signification. Bible says, and there were shepherds living, amen, out in the field nearby. So we, we, we're looking at something right now, all right, that when God wants to connect with, amen, people on earth regarding his prophetic intention, he looks for, amen, people with a shepherd heart. He looks for shepherds, all right. He's not just looking for any kind of people, he's looking for shepherd. What does that mean? It means that, all right, uh, uh, this, this man that is going to be born, amen, is first of all, his ministry is that which is connected to that of a shepherd. But beyond that, God is also looking for people, amen, who have, amen, a shepherd's heart. A shepherd's heart. And shepherding, amen, is beyond just, you know, pastoring people. Shepherding is about understanding people. 
shepherding is about understanding the nature amen of sheep shepherding earlier is about is about is about is about the economy because in shepherding there's a dimension of economy in shepherding there is a dimension hallelujah of development amen of growth hallelujah of maturation amen of protection hallelujah of of, of leading come on in shepherding hallelujah you find that concept hallelujah of one amen who who has a sense of purpose who has a sense amen of intention amen shepherd and they were shepherds but beyond that you know the work of a shepherd was the was the general economy of the day so god is saying something to us about the principle of kingdom economy here all right this 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 shepherds all right they know how to tend flock what were they doing the bible says they were watching their their flock their sheep in the night so these these people amen understood what it means to to carry amen you know the the, the heart the the desire amen the, the concept of protecting that which has been committed into their hands amen because amen the 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 the, the, the people amen depends amen on the flock amen the economy of the people is connected amen to the state the condition the well-being the protection earlier of the sheep you see so you find leadership coming out of this order you find the spirit of leadership connected to this dimension amen of shepherding what are you talking about well you understand that amen david was a shepherd this the, in fact the ministry of david began from that dimension before before david ever amen uh, had to fight amen a, a goliath and conquer and became a you know a general that finally led him to become amen the king praise the lord <laughs> david was first a shepherd everything starts from that condition of a, of of being a shepherd i'm not talking about being called into a, into a pastoral ministry no 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 that, that's why i keep telling people amen, when we begin to enter the kingdom will begin to have a deeper understanding of what the of what the ministry gift and the, the ministry anointing is when you are gifted in the ministry of a shepherd you will know how to treat people you will know how to talk to people but muscle you will be able to look into each one amen and find the call and find the intentions of god it could be that man that woman that you're working with amen that next person that sits with you earlier you know at your office when you have a heart of a shepherd you will care for that person because that's the first thing we see in the heart amen of a shepherd not just to skin the sheep the sheep and leave them amen you know for the wolves amen to devour but but something important that when it's time for the sheep to be skinned is because amen the time has come and because amen from that from that skinning wolves are, are you know are, you know are you know are, are, are vested you understand to to to, to do something to bring a, a sense of income yeah you understand we have to look at all the spiritual ramification that deals with the idea amen of shepherding when when Jesus was born the Bible talk about amen the angel of the Lord locating shepherds not just farmers farming is important but they they located shepherd because this king amen is gonna lead his people is gonna deliver his people so the entry point the entry point amen of this king into the earth has to be through the ministry of a shepherd whatever you're doing Whatever God has committed into your hand, no matter how little, how insignificant that may look, you're a shepherd. Just like it is the will of God for us to prophesy. It is the will of God for all of us to know how to build accurately. It is also the will of God, amen, for us to be good shepherds. A shepherd is very sensitive to the state of his flock, of his follower, of the people around him or her. And he knows how to discipline. He knows how to correct. We have to understand all this. The Bible says, and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch. These are watchers. 
keeping watch while the flocks were fast asleep they were watching protecting amen the you know the people protecting the the community from the wolves watching over their flock at night they have a sense of duty they have a sense of commitment they have a sense of protection the bible says an an angel that's nine an angel of the lord appeared to them in fact in most cases when when you hear this word an angel of the lord that itself could, could, could signify the lord himself that is the theophany that's why in theology we call the theophany of christ an angel of the lord or the lord of hosts an angel of the lord appear that is the lord himself christ himself appearing in the form of an angel he's been born but he's also appearing at the same time hallelujah an angel of the lord appeared to you know to them amen as the angel appeared the next thing is the glory of the lord shone around them now when we talk about the glory of god we talk about something that is deeper than just you know feeling you know having a feeling or a goose pimples you know or having or seeing light you know or hearing thunder the glory of god is a reflection of the very nature of the very character of the very essence in other words these shepherds amen were so aligned in their heart amen that they were able amen to connect with the glory of god they were able to connect with the essence of god and the glory of the lord shone around them amen and they were terrified because they were overwhelmed and the next thing when that happened is that there has to be a voice but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Don't be terrified. I bring you good news. I bring to you good news. I bring you good news. Amen. That will, that will cause great joy for all humans. For all creation. Where? Where? Are you seeing the importance of what amen, this angel is saying? It says, I bring to you good news that will cause great joy. Not just joy, but great joy for all mankind, for all people. Today in the town of David, in the town of David, where is that? Bethlehem. A savior is born to you. He is the Messiah. He was defined. They defined what was born. He is the Messiah. The Lord. I, I can imagine the state of these shepherds. <laughs> I'm sure they will be moving from, from believing to doubt. You know, to, to, to joy. And then, you know, to all kinds of, all kinds of, you know. Uh, uh, they would have gone through all kinds of mode. All kinds of belief. Because how? Today, they said. They were not aware of what was happening. What was, while they were watching their sheep by night, they were not aware of what was taking place at, their, at that same moment in time until, amen, their, their, their state of watch was interrupted. Are you getting the point that I'm making? Until they were interrupted. This day, Like they said to Elijah, Elisha, do you know that this day your master will be taken from you? He said to them, I'm, 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 I'm aware, but you hold your peace. You are aware of something, but there's something beyond, amen, just an awareness. There are all kinds of things that the church are aware of, but there's a major reality that we are so completely blind to. Today, in the town of David not somewhere else a savior has been born to you he is the messiah the angel said the lord this is the heart of what i'm saying to, to us are we aware of what is being born of what god is birthing of what god is releasing are you aware am i aware let me explain what I'm saying. They said this day in the town. Of course, they, they understand the town. They know the, they know the place called Amen, <laughs> the town of David. They all everybody understand Bethlehem. 
But what they did not understand is a Messiah is being born. The Lord. Listen, friends. If we are if we're not prophetic in our understanding what that means is if we're not spiritually alive aware and cognizant of the, the activities of God around us we will walk past things that was designed that has been designed to shift not just our life but the course of generation without our awareness without 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 us knowing it we will walk past and this is the, the the dilemma of the church today that as we live amen in this in this now and age in this 21st century i miss all of the things that is happening across the earth the corona all right the economic meltdown all right the political you know issues all of the things that is happening in america in south africa all across the world with china every all of these things that we are all you know cracking our head about you know there is something significant that god is birthing let us not be distracted by amen the things happening without seeing the things that the father will have us see whenever god wants to move he always move within the chaos within the confusions of men He's not among the chaos. He's not within the chaos. But he, he doesn't move outside of the realities. Outside of your challenge. God doesn't move outside. Amen. He will not go do something. Imagine God wants to do something in your life. He will not leave you in, the, in that situation that you're going through. And go do something that he wants to do in your life somewhere else. No. He will do it within the environment that you live in. But if you don't have the eyes to see. And the ears to hear. You will miss it. That's what happened to, to the children of Israel. He was among them, but they did not recognize him. That's why he said to as many who believed in him, to them he gave the power to become. You will walk past greatness and you will not be able to identify it. Why? Because you're blind to it. Because you think that this is how greatness must look when you see greatness. How many times have we missed certain people because we have defined them that they must appear in this form. They must look. They must have this look. They must. They must appear in this way. They must talk, hallelujah, from this, you know, way. But we miss. We miss it. The Bible says many have entertained angels without their awareness. We can. We can. We can miss the things of God because we have a wrong focus, because we have a wrong emphasis because of our theology this is this is the thing the lord has been sharing with me in the past few days faith and belief are two different things but they coexist if if your belief system all right is not aligned to the counsels of god the word of god the will of god the intentions of god your faith amen will be misguided your faith earlier will be focusing on the wrong thing and in fact you will not be able to walk in the reality of what heaven wants to do in your life because faith speak into your value system excuse me excuse me your belief speaks into your value system your belief speaks into your tradition your culture what you believe is a stronghold what you believe defines amen if you are going to be able to have or not what you believe defines who you are you are the submission of what you believe. Your life, amen, is the very reflection of your belief system. So your faith only boosts a layer. Your belief. As well, we must be very careful of what we believe. What do you believe? Because your belief is your conviction. Your belief is your conviction. Why we seek and pray to have faith? No. We should first seek, amen, to have the right sense of belief. Because then you'll be able to see things the way God will have you see them. And therefore, your faith can then earlier be released towards what you believe. Because your belief and your faith ought to work hand in hand. 
So if, if, if these angels were not properly aligned, their faith, when, when, when the angel appeared, they were afraid. The angel says, don't be afraid. I just brought a message, but let me align you. And the angel gave them the importance, the significance of that glory that shone, that was revealed. Today, in the, in the town of David, in the town, amen, of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. They give clarity, they give definition, and they give description. This is the sign to you. This, this, excuse me, this will be the sign to you. You will find him, amen. Listen to this. This, this sounds like, a, you know, a, a paradox. A king is born, and he's born in a, in, in a manger, all right? I mean, how do, you, how do you give birth to a king? So these guys are going, they're looking for a king. You will expect that the, the, the angel will say he's born in, in the palace. Some lush, good place. No. They say this will be the sign to you. So it's a sign. The place where he was born, how he was born, is a prophetic sign. This will be the sign to you. You will find him. You will, you will, you will find a, a baby wrapped in a cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company amen, of heavenly hosts, as this angel was proclaiming this thing, the Bible says, suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels. Now, they didn't describe if these guys were angels, but, you know, there's another activity, hallelujah, that began to happen in the heavenlies. In other words, amen, there was, there was, there was, a, there was a great, amen, sig significance, amen, of, of, you know, of, cos you know, uh, of co cosmic, hallelujah, reactions and whatever you, you, you want to call it, amen. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So you see what I'm talking about when I say the angel of the Lord that spoke to them, amen, was the angel. So, so the, the, the shepherds are confirming it here. They say, let us go. Let's take it from verse 12 again. This will be the sign to you. You will find him. Excuse me. Those days. My iPad is just misbehaving here. Oh, thank you, Father. This will be a sign to you. Thank you, Lord. Let's take it from verse 12 again. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in a cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the heavens. Or in the heavens, excuse me. Glory to God in the heaven or in the highest. And on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests on. When the angel all right had left when the angels had left and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go to bethlehem and see the things that has happened so something happened in bethlehem something is happening amen within our nation within our society and we want to have a clear prophetic insight amen to what is taking place it's gonna be revealed only to the exclusive amen the ones who are searching the bible says when you search when you seek amen when you knock it will be given to you it, the door will be open if we're not seeking we will not find if we're not searching amen we will not discover 
So we have to have, amen, the spirit, the attitude, the, the, the desire, amen, to search like the Bereans. We have to, we have to understand the nature. We have to be able to see the prophetic, amen, signification to the things happening around us. Even regarding the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the angels had left, and they had gone into heaven, the shepherd said, let us go to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened, which which the Lord has told us. Verse 16. So they, they hurried off, amen, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they, they spread the word concerning what they, amen, what they have been told about this child. They spread the word. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd had said to them. But the Bible says in verse 19, I like this, one of my best scripture. But Mary treasure up, Mary treasure up all these things and ponder on them in her heart. Mary, she treasure up, amen. She kept those things, amen, about, about Jesus Christ. She ponder on these things. She treasure them in her heart. The shepherd returned, glory, glorifying and praising God, amen. And so, what are we talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm basically helping us to understand, if you will, the importance of what is happening, particularly prophetically, so we don't miss out. So we, we don't, we are not, we, we, we are not captured by just a mere ceremony and forget what the Spirit of God is saying and revealing to us. One more scripture before I round up. It's hot here. John chapter 18. Let's take it from verse 31. Pilate said, Take him yourself and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone. These are the Pharisees. Remember they arrested Jesus. They brought him to Pilate. But we have no right to execute anyone. They objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus said about his kind of death and how he was to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? <laughs> Are you the king of the Jews? Now, why did I bring this scripture? Basically, Christ came into this world as a king. He was born. But guess what? The very people that he came to redeem, to restore the very throne of David, hallelujah, that he came to restore, the people could not see it. People, in fact, they rejected him until, amen, they finally handed him over, amen, to, you know, to, to the Gentiles, who, of course, who is Pilate. His own very people, the same people that God, amen, sent his son to die for, right? the same very people who gave him up. Now, what, what, what am I trying to say? We need to have insight. We need to believe God to give us understanding. To see beyond the narrative that we have been told. Uh, verse 30, 30, 34. When Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea or your own opinion? Jesus asked him, or did somebody, amen, did somebody told you about this? Has somebody talked to you about me? This is this is this is very important. All right, the things you claim you know, do you know this thing by experience, by divine encounter, or is it a third party information? We cannot enter into this dimension of the day heaven is calling us into if all we have is a third party knowledge. Amen. Pilate said, "Are you the king of the Jew?" Jesus said to him, "Amen." Is this your own idea? Or have you caught a revelation? Uh, do you understand? Do you have a personal experience, an encounter of what you're talking about? Did somebody tell you about this thing? And of course, Pilate said, am I a Jew? Pilate replied, your own people and your chief priest handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Well, <laughs> What he did is the fact that they cannot accept him as their king. They cannot accept, amen, his testimony. So because of his testimony, they handed him to be killed. They handed him to Pilate. Jesus said, listen to this, I love this. Jesus said, 
my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would have fought to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. We're going to be dealing with this next year when we begin to talk about the concept of entering, pressing into the kingdom, entering the next frontier of the kingdom. But here is an important thing. Jesus said to Pilate, if you want to know me, then you have to shift your perspective. Because my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom comes from another place. Even though this place, this earth is part of my kingdom. But I'm not limited by this earth. Friends, when they begin to persecute you, and they begin to challenge what you stand for. And they begin to resist what the Lord has revealed to you via his word. And through the testimony of his spirit. Are you going to raise your hand to fight back? Or are you going to make the same proclamation and declaration that Jesus made? My kingdom is not of this world. In other words, the things, the value system of this world do not define my enthronement as a king. The reason why they could not accept Jesus Christ is because they did not have an understanding. They could not see amen, from the reality that he spoke from. They could not, they could not connect amen, to his position, to his kind of life, to how he lived his life, to how he interacted. Amen. His philosophy was totally different from what they were expecting. His belief system, his culture and the expression, amen, of, of, of his divine standard was totally aberrant to what, amen, they subscribed to. And so, they decide to kill him. And this is what the world system do. This is what tradition does. When, amen, the things that you stand for does not agree with what they believe, with their own story and narrative, they will try to kill you. Let's look at one more scripture, then I'll be done. Isaiah chapter 9. When you read the book of Isaiah, you're reading about amen, the Messiah. Because Isaiah basically is, is, is a messianic amen, prophet. Almost all of the prophetic declaration of you know, Isaiah amen, are all messianic by nature. In other words, they are a reflection of the, of the life, of the nature of Christ, of his assignment, of his purpose. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. This is a powerful prophetic word. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by, listen to this, but in the future, he will honor Galilee amen, of the nations by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. It's still the same nation that he's going to honor in the future. Verse 2 says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of, of deep darkness, a light has dawned on them. We're looking at the, the Messianic, amen, prophetic mandate or ministry. Alright, so when we say Christ, amen, has come, his will is established. This should be, amen, what we should be celebrating, hallelujah. That those who live in the land, amen, of the shadow of death, hallelujah, by, by the way of, of the Galilee of the nation, have seen a great light, hallelujah. That this should be a time of rejoicing. Why? Because a prophetic counsel, a prophetic word, amen, is in in manifestation verse 2 says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of deep darkness amen a light has dawned on them hallelujah verse 3 you have enlarged the nations and increased their joy amen the the the, 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 the rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder for as in the days of the Medians, as, as in the day of the Medians' defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened the people, that burdened them, the bars, the bars across their shoulders, amen, the rod of their oppressors, every warrior's boot, amen, is used in the battle. 
every warrior's boots used in the battle and every garment rolled in blood amen will be destined for you know for burning will be for for fire verse 6 says for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government amen will be on his shoulder and he will be, and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end of course nobody can can you know can be qualified for this kind of quality of a life of of a person that will be released into the earth except for the messiah himself this is a messianic you know a, a prophecy but now we are seeing an increase a fulfillment hallelujah of this prophecy but are we walking in the awareness of it because when we start to walk in alignment with what has been prophesied we become the expression of the fulfillment amen of this prophecy because you know messianic prophecy amen is a progressive prophecy in fact all prophecy are progressive in their fulfillment all right while we have seen amen part of this prophecy fulfilled in history we are going to see amen the rest fulfillment amen of this prophecy as we press further into the future the more we live our life in progression to us amen god's counsel god's word the more the increase of that which heaven amen has declared and has prophesied begins to come into manifestation this is what i want to share with us this this afternoon i pray and i hope that this word will bring us to a conscious awareness this day in the in the town of david in the city of bethlehem a child is born a king is born and this will be the sign you will find the child wrapped up in a swaddling cloth in the manger there of course the second narrative of that story is the fact that mangers majors excuse me majors came from the east when they heard the proclamation the declaration of the angel the Bible says they brought, hallelujah, treasures to this king that is born. Something is happening in your life. Heaven is birthing things around you, within you. Are you aware of it? Do you recognize what is taking place? Amidst the normalcy, amidst what they call new normal, God is disrupting the standards of the day. Heaven is birthing and bringing forth a new order of life. Our life is not defined and determined by human, human government. Weak, frilled, you know, limited human government. Our life is defined and determined by this king. What the Bible calls Emmanuel, God with us. This king, who the Bible says, amen, he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. The world needs peace. The world wants peace. They can't find it in any other place. The peace that the world is looking for is not in the hand of some few elites. It's not in the hands, I mean, of the Roman Catholic Church. It's not in the hand of any religious sects. The world, amen, is searching for peace. The peace, amen, is not in, it's not in UN, no. It's not in AU. The peace that the world is looking for is in a person. Is in Christ Jesus. The peace that you are searching for is in Christ Jesus. There's more to Christ than the things that religion has defined. There's more to Christ, amen, than what society has shown us. Than what we have heard preach, amen, by this tele-evangelist. There's more to Christ than many of the things we've read in the book. There's time to grow in the knowledge of Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. Of the increase, the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne. We just read that in Luke chapter 2. He will reign on David's throne and over, and over his kingdom Amen. Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness 
from that time on forever the zeal of the almighty will accomplish this lord i thank you for this word word of life word of truth word of hope may this word begin to anoint our understanding oh god to begin to see to start hearing to have an adjustment yes lord to start preparing ourselves oh god in readiness oh god may we mix knowledge and zeal together in rising up to become what you have ordained as we celebrate the birth of our king as we commemorate we commemorate this glorious prophetic event may we understand how to live life may your kingdom come may your kingdom come may we not be captured in this day of awakening may we not go into slumber may we not go into stupor may we not be captured God, by charlatans may we not become like children playing in the marketplace when we're supposed to be trading when we're supposed to be engaging oh god yes in kingdom economy may we not be children oh god playing around grant us a heart of maturity help us father holy spirit help us awaken us illuminate our minds and our understanding bring us to the place of divine knowledge may your counsel lead us as your angel christ you are the angel that led the people lead us to that point to that place where we can hear where we can see to the glory of your name open our eyes of understanding remove oh god the cataracts and the glaucomas oh god help us oh god bring us to the place of the washing that we may rejoice in this glorious day may christ be formed in us may his glory become radiant upon our life we bless you oh god oh hallelujah amen well thank you so much everyone this afternoon for joining me if you have joined to listen or if you're going to be listening later or be or be watching this i want to encourage you to allow these things I mean, just, these are scriptures that we all know but this is just what the spirit of the Lord dropped in my, in my spirit how, how aware are we of the significance of what we define amen, as the birth of Christ I'm not talking about Christmas Christmas is something else but I miss all of that something is happening that is very important how important is the birth of Jesus Christ to your life to your life, to your, to your walk to your sense of redemption may this time be a time of renewal this day the king is born in bethlehem god bless you guys have yourself a wonderful time rejoice uh, uh, with your friends and your family whatever you're going to be doing may the spirit of god guide you and lead you god bless you bye-bye